Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a flare using Space Graphics Toolkit. A flare is a way to visualize a light in a scene. So this is a default scene, we have a directional light. There's no actual visualization within the game. The light is basically invisible unless you see it shining a light on something. So to add a visualization, let's first change this to a point light instead of a directional light because these are easier to show, but later I will show you how to use directional light. And to add the flare, let's select this in the hierarchy, right click, and then go to Space Graphics Toolkit, and then click on Flare. This will add a flare game object as a child of the selected directional light here. And we need to set up a mesh and a material. To do this, we can just click Add Mesh and Add Material. This will add the SGT Flare Mesh and SGT Flare Material components and these will set up our flare. So right away you can see that we have a flare or visualization of the light and we can see this in the game view if we select the main camera and add the SGT mouse look com oops the SGT mouse look component and the SGT keyboard move components if we hit play and move around you can see the light is in the scene and the flare is rendering on top so we can see exactly where our light is. So if this is a space scene we also may want to change the clear flags to solid color and change the background color to black to make the flare more obvious. Next let's have a look at all of the flare settings. So the really important settings here are the like the radius. This is the radius of the flare itself. And next we have wave. If I enable wave, you can see it adds like a cross or a plus sign. This is because it is using a sine wave to uh, displace the flare mesh. Right now this is set to use four points. If you want to have two points, you can set that to two. If you want three or five or whatever, let's set this to four. And then wave strength, we can make uh, the wave more prominent or less prominent. You can adjust the wave power, which is how uh, sharp these points are. If we decrease this, you see they become very wide. You can adjust the angle here, which is useful if you set the points to something like 2. And you set the wave phase to 90, so you can get a horizontal light flare. And you can also use noise. Noise adds random points instead of being distributed uh, evenly like in a sine wave you can have them random and you can press R here to randomly change the random seed you can adjust how many points there are in the noise you can adjust the angle of the noise and the strength you can also combine this with the wave to create the exact setting you want and also in the SGT flare material you can see here we have the base color of the flare you also have the RGB power sliders, which allow you to set how quickly each uh, color transitions. So here, if we increase the red and green, then red and green uh, become extinct quite quickly and blue remains, which is why it looks blue or purple here. You can also change the easing function to get the exact uh, visual result you want. So if we hit play, uh, you can see we can move around the scene and if I click game object, 3D object and then add a cube, I can bring the cube closer to the camera here and if I increase the scale of the cube to let's see, 555 and move it over here, if I hit play and move the camera so that the cube is now in the way. You can see that the flare is hidden behind the cube. In many scenarios you want the flare to render on top of the cube so it looks super bright like here. To do that you can select the flare and go to the SGT flare material and change the Z test mode from L equal which means less than equal and change it to always. This means it will always render uh, on top of other things as long as the render queue is set above the other objects in your scene. And so you can see it now renders on top 
of the cube and it looks super bright. But one problem here is if I move the camera so that the cube is in the way, you see the flare is still being rendered on top. So to solve this, what you can do is click on Game Objects, Space Graphics Toolkit, and then add the Raycast Depth component. Uh, let's move that to the root. And then go back to the flare and drag and drop the Raycast Depth into the Depth field on our SGT Flare component. As soon as we've done that, you see the flare disappears from the game view. If we move the camera back, you'll see it now appears and then it disappears as the cube uh, gets in the way. So this component, the Raycast Depth, is used to calculate the occlusion here and you see it transitions based on the thickness of the Raycast. So if you want this transition to be sharper than this, let's say in your game this doesn't make sense that you can view this the flare in this scenario, then you can decrease the max thickness value, let's say 0.3. Let's say 0.3. So now you'll see it's very visible here, but as soon as we uh, get in the way, as soon as the cube gets in the way, it fades out very quickly. This works uh, very well for this scenario when we have a solid object like this cube. And this also relies on the box collider here. So if we disable the box collider, you will see the flare no longer occludes behind the cube. Uh, in many scenarios, let's say you have a very complex object or an animated object, you may not be able to use a collider. Or for transparent objects, a collider uh, doesn't work correctly because a collider is either solid or uh, non-solid whereas a transparent object could be a transition between the two. So if that's the case, then you don't want to use the Raycast Depth component. So let's delete that. And let's go to Game Object, Space Graphics Toolkit. And instead, we will add the Camera Depth component. And like before, let's select the Flare and drag and drop the Camera Depth into the HDT Flare Depth field. And this works similar to the previous one but you'll notice it steps it's very abrupt the changes this is because the resolution is quite low let's set this to say uh, 20 and let's and if you move the camera you can see that it fades more smoothly so the difference between the camera depth component and the raycast depth component is the camera depth component uses a camera to render everything between the flare and the current camera. So this uh, calculates the exact opacity of all of the objects between uh, those two points. So this works perfectly fine with solid objects like this cube, and it also works with semi-transparent objects such as a planet's atmosphere or a gas giant's atmosphere, or rings or absolutely anything in the scene. And you just have to be careful because because it's using a camera to render the scene, it's more expensive, especially on mobile devices. So if possible, you should use the Raycast Depth component. And uh, this also has settings like the size, the size of the camera as it renders. So this is one world unit, uh, which produces quite a smooth transition. But look, it doesn't make sense for the flare to be visible in this scenario. So. Let's change the size to 0.2, so now the transition is much uh, more realistic. And the resolution is in pixels, so this is rendering 20 by 20 pixels, so don't make this too high, otherwise it's going to be rendering some uh, very crazy high texture, which is going to be very expensive. And you can change the ease instead of li linear, you can make a smooth step, so it fades out uh, more smoothly. And this is for a point light. As you can see, this light exists in 3D space. I can move around it. In many games, you want to have a directional light. So if I change the light type to directional, you'll see the lighting in the scene changes, but the flare is still uh, in 3D space. To fix this, let's go to flare and let's enable the follow cameras setting. So now you'll see the light disappeared. That's because it's now been repositioned somewhere 
uh, maybe on the other side of this cube. Uh, I don't know, let's increase the size of the flare. So scale, let's make this 10, 10, 10. Let's see, oh, there we go. So if I move the camera around the scene, the flare does not change position. That's because it's now positioned directionally. And if I move behind the cube, you see it still occludes perfectly. So if you have the perfect settings for your flare mesh and flare material, uh, I recommend you go to export mesh here and export texture and then create a material using that exported texture. Then you can set them manually here. If you do that, then it will decrease the loading speed of your game, which is very important for mobile devices, especially if your scene has many flares. Like in this example, we're just using one flare for the sun, but if your game has a flare for every light source or lantern or explosion or something like that, you will probably want to save the mesh and material uh, to stop it being generated in every single instance. So I hope this video has been uh, interesting. If you have any comments, please leave them below and enjoy making your games. Thanks for watching.